Um, I can't thank you enough for allowing us to talk about a very invisible injury, and most importantly, allow Keith and I to be a part of this platform called Stop Concussions. We're here to educate, to teach, and most importantly, protect ourselves from ourselves. You guys are no differently, and when I say guys, men and women, um, I mean it in, in, in respect. You're a family. Just as a hockey player in, in, in a room, we're family. And so you as family have to understand that you have to protect yourself from yourself. And what does that mean? Well, you're very similar to us. You have a very strenuous job. You have a stressful job. You're very active. You're very fit. And as a professional athlete, we're supposedly the same. Um, and so we were taught, as young boys and girls, to play through the pain. To suck it up. It ain't broke. You play. And I'm sure you do the same in the work that you do. We can no longer accept the word work or play at all costs. It just can't be. You can't play through the pain. This is not an injury where you can take a needle and go out and continue on playing while your, your knee is damaged. Or you're cut and you can take some stitches. This is a brain. And it's really important that we don't play through that pain. So I tell you, I'm concussed. What does that mean to you? Why? Wow, you're glad you're the hockey player. Now, oh, gosh, you know what? It's a part of the playing the game. It's the cost of playing the game. So if I say I'm concussed, you think I'm, wow, you put me up on a pedestal. But if I tell you I'm brain injured, you look at me completely different. It's a different stigma. If I told you at 30 I almost took my life because of a concussion, you'd look at me and say, God, ah, there's no possible way. But it's real, and it's there, and there's no shame. There's no shame. The shame is that you don't do something about it. So I applaud you today to take some time and, and, and understand. Uh, it's a great day here in Vancouver, so you didn't need to be here. But you're here because you want to learn. The only way we're going to get out of this problem is that we're going to educate ourselves. It's education, education, and education. And you are the perfect group to help us Stop Concussions, Think First, which is a great organization, to allow us to go out on the street because people admire what you do. They look up to you what you do. And so as you have the ability to speak and talk your journey, it helps us be able to put a personal message to this. There's no light switch. There's no band-aid. There's no pill to fix this. Only we can fix it, and we fix it together. So we need to make sure that we just don't sweep this under the rug. We need to make sure that we become accountable for our environment. As a hockey player going into the corner, I have to know who's there and what my environment is about. And you as a stunt person also have to have that ability to know your environment, what you're doing. And I apologize, but I wouldn't say they're tricks, but these moves and these, these, uh, these uh, fast reaction uh, 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 opportunities for you when you're doing what you do, you have to be in control of that. And if you're not, then you need to. That's why we started Stop Concussions. We built it into a four-tier program. First is education and awareness. We all know that. So with education comes the responsibility prevention. And that's what you can do. You can understand the rules that you play in your profession and build in preventive uh, uh, opportunities. Collectively, talk about it. Work together as we are here today with your group, making sure that you understand and ask questions. If you don't ask, you don't learn. The third one is management, and we have been horrific with this management. And so it's really important that we manage this injury better. And management is a responsibility of yourself, not just expecting the doctor to figure it out. You have to help them figure it out. And the last part that was uh, developed by Stop Concussions is research. We need to understand the process better. We, under, we need to have an appropriate protocol. We've got top neurologists in the world say, ah, you don't need a baseline test, come see me out as far as I'm a neurosurgeon. That's plain Russian roulette. It's your brain. You get one of them. As I grow old, I'm probably going to have a hip replaced. I'm probably going to have a knee replaced, maybe an elbow replaced. But the one thing I know I can't replace is that. It cannot be replaced. And it is the most precious thing God has ever given us. So we've got to start taking better care of it. Concussions do not know age. 
does not know gender, certainly doesn't know the activities, doesn't know if I'm playing hockey, doesn't know if I'm jumping off a, a roof and landing into a big, huge water pit. It only knows the brain. And so it's important because they don't take weekends off. You can't. If you really want to put in a, a, a really good understanding over the last couple of years, how simple it is, if I took an egg and I threw the egg against the wall right now, we'd see two things. We'd see one, the shell break and the yolk break. So what we do is naturally, humans, we want to solve it. So what we do is we put a shell around it. So we put a helmet or we put different type of of protective gear around it, skiing, snowboarding, biking. But when you think about it, if I take that same egg and I put in a huge cast iron casing with six inches of foam and I throw it against the wall and I open it up, the shell is still intact, but the yolk is not. And so that's the real understanding of this injury, is that the protection is only as good as what you know and is only as good as what you report. The goal today of the presentation was to help educate you as a performer, stunt coordinators if you're here, and hopefully a few directors and assistant directors about the signs and symptoms of concussions. What it allows us to do is to understand the, what your role is to help with an injured performer or yourself so they can continue on living a healthy life but also doing what you want to do. What I really want to see today is that you as peers, as performers, as directors, as assistant directors, and physicians, work together and make sure we make the right decisions. Lori helped bring this to my attention that we have to be a little bit more conservative of understanding and handling your potential injuries. They're gonna happen, guys. We're not gonna eliminate them. Some of us are gonna be lucky that we don't get them. Some of us aren't gonna be so lucky. So we need to understand that. And let's not be so eager to do the one more take I guess it is in your terminology, or that one more fight, just like a hockey player, or that one more fall. You've got a high-risk job, there's no question. I played, uh, you know, skating at, what, 30 miles an hour, pucks coming at me at 120, hours, uh, 120 miles an hour. I wouldn't do what you do. I've seen you fall off bridges and smashing cars and fights. And I did it because I had to. You do it because you want to. And so I think it's really important that you take accountability in that and understand the role that you need to do to protect yourself and also your colleagues. Life may be tenuous, but you can make change. And it's not changing your profession that we want to do. We want to change your mindset. We want you to become active, proactive, and help us better it for your children and your grandchildren. Because if we don't, we will pay a dear price. The dear price is our brain power. I want to thank you very much for taking some time out to, to listen. I'm here for questions. Uh, I'm here for uh, crying on a shoulder or just telling a funny story. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Lori, Jeff, for allowing me to be a part of your day. Um, and uh, I'll leave you with that. Thank you.